you want to get your own back. You want to hurt the narcissist too. I get it. I completely get it because of everything that they have done to you, everything that they have put you through and the pain that they have caused. Completely get it. But there is only one way. My friends, there is only one way that you can get your own back and hurt them. I'm going to talk about this in the video. Hello everyone, I hope that you're all doing really well. I really do. So you wanna get your own back on the narcissist. I completely get why you wanna do this because they have put you through so much, they continue to put you through so much and it is so painful and so hurtful. But my friends, there is only one way that you can do this, all right? And you can do this. This doesn't involve any craziness anything to go out of your own way no disturbance to you and this trick or this hack is very simple and it's not because you want to play games or you want to, you're in competition with the narcissist no i know this is not about that like i completely get why you want to do this or why you want to know what this trick is and there is only one way there is only one thing that you can do that is really going to hurt them I'm sure that you have probably heard this many times using this technique. And I want to talk about why it is so effective, why it really, really works. And you're probably thinking, Anushka, just say it already. Like, what is it? The thing is, is no contact. Yes, my friends, you heard me right. It is no contact contact when you are someone who is so concerned with getting emotional validation attention wanting other people to validate you to make you feel good all right all of your resources all of your attention is going to be about getting those needs met getting that from another person so when you are hyper focused on getting your needs met because Literally for them, this is one of the most important things. This is what they really crave. This is what they actually really want, all right? So when your attention and focus is on getting that, you will do anything to get that. So when you cut that off, when you cut those things off from somebody who is so hyper-focused on getting that, this is going to hurt them very, very much because they can't get any emotional information from you. When you want someone to give you that and they are not, this is really hurtful. This is something that the narcissist can't stand. Think about it, if you cut all contact and attention, all right, this person can't anticipate your next move. This person can't try and understand what you're thinking. This person can't get this emotional information, change it around 360 and throw it back at you. They can't do that. So if you cut yourself off from giving them this information, this then puts the power back onto you. Yes, it does. Because you then are able to see it for what it is. You are able then to get your energy back. You are then able to get your thinking space back. You're not then giving it all out. And this is, this is life force energy. All right. This is what they are concerned with. You are not outputting that. So this person can't take from you. It's as though they steal this from you. It's not like you consciously or you want to give it. This is stolen from you. This is taken from you. Whether you knowingly do it or do it, they take it because they believe that they can and they've got away with it for so long. So that's why they just take it. If you think about it, right, when somebody stops talking to you and someone stops communicating with you, just like that, this causes you to then want that person even more. This is the psychology of it because it's something that you can't have. So you're gonna want it even more. And this is the way that it works for the narcissist too. When they can't have this from you, they are going to want it even more. And they might even pursue you. 
they might even try and get your attention in a variety of ways and a variety of techniques to try and get contact from you. They might just um, get in contact with you like via text or phone call. They might just show up. They might send other people to get in contact with you to try and initiate a response because they have no respect for your boundaries. They have no respect for you. They don't they don't understand that actually, do you know what? I need space. I need time to think. They don't care. They don't care about any of that. What they care about is they're not, they're not getting their needs met. So they're going to push even harder because in their mind, this is something that they can't get. So they want it even more. So when you take that away from them, they can't cope. Even more so for somebody like that who is hyper-focused on getting emotional validation and your energy and your attention. They're going to want it even more. Emotional exchange is very important for the narcissist because not only do they get their needs met, but they can also read you emotionally. And for them, what is very important is how much you feel for them, how much you actually care for them. And this is constantly tested all the time. They might even triangulate you. They might put other people into the mix just to make you jealous. And they do this because they want to know whether you still care about them. And remember jealousy, anger, guilt. These are the emotions that they know. These are the emotions that they thrive on. It's not that they don't feel positive emotions. They do, but they are fleeting. And so they can't really embody those emotions. So they will hyper-focus on the negative because this is something that they have been taught to do since childhood. This is something that they have always felt. So feeling happiness and joy, uh, positive emotions is not something that they really understand or that they can really embody and really make sense of it. They go back to something that they know and that's the negative emotions and that's the negativity. So when they make you feel negative, this is something that they understand. This is something that they think, yeah, I feel this. Why shouldn't you? You should feel this. So it's kind of like they want to punish you in some way. They want to make you feel this because this is what they have felt. So you should feel it too. This also initiates jealousy within them. Like when you're happy or when you've got positive things happening for you, or when good things are going, you know, for you, they don't like it because they're not getting that. So then this becomes this internal competition that they have. And this is damaging because you're in this competition that you don't knowingly enter into it, but they make it about that. And so if they are not winning or they perceive that they're not winning, they will punish you. So this is why they do these little mind games, these little competitions so that they come out on top. This for them is very important that they are winning, that they are getting their needs met. This makes them feel superior. This is something that they didn't feel as children, something that they didn't get met as a child. So when they are doing it to others, they are taking control of the situation, but control over your emotions. So they know what the outcome is going to be. When you know what the outcome is going to be, you have to be able to manipulate the interim so that that outcome does actually happen, which is what they do. So if they're doing this and you cut off emotional supply, can you see how this is going to affect them? Can you see how this is really damaging for them? They hate it because they don't know where you are emotionally. They don't know what their next move is going to be. Their behavior, the way that they, the way that they act towards you, the way that they make you feel is all dependent on the way that you react or you respond to certain things that they do. So can you see how evil, calculated and sadistic this actually is? When you are manipulating someone to feel something, when you have orchestrated these events, when you have made someone feel something, because it's for your own gains. Can you now see how really disruptive and dysfunctional this is? 
the narcissist is not going to change. This isn't going to change in some way if you give them a lot of your emotional validation, a lot of your energy, a lot of your time. This isn't going to change. This is something that the narcissist needs to happen all the time, like all the time. They're not going to change this. There is never going to be a different outcome. It's got to happen consistently. And as many of you know, the narcissist needs validation all the time, like all day long. This isn't just because you are okay, you know, for like half an hour, an hour, and then for the rest of the day, it's going to be okay. No, it doesn't happen like this because they are impulsive. They go from one thing to another. They can't self-soothe. So they can't calm themselves down. They look for you to do that. So every time that they become spiked with something or every time that they become triggered by something, they look to you to be able to give them that validation, to give them that calmness. So that's why this is never going to work. That's why you giving them attention, supply all the time is never going to make a difference. It's not even going to touch the surface because it means that you have to be an emotional slave for this person. It means that you've got to consistently keep doing that. But then the alternative is, is that you get burnt out and that you can't cope with this anymore. That's why this happens. They can't stop even if they wanted to. They can't and they won't because if you're getting your needs met, if someone is giving you something that you want, why are you going to change it? They're not interested in making you happy. They're not interested in stopping this. They just want to get what they can from you. And they know, they know on some level that this relationship can't continue like this, that this relationship can't last, you know, at this pace. So they need to get what they can from you quite early on in the relationship because they know at some point you're going to go. They know, they, they know this. this. These relationships are not built to last. This is why when we come out of these relationships, we are a former self of who we were. We're not ourselves because we have been programmed or conditioned into giving the narcissist what they want, like all the time. We just feel so drained, so devastated by everything that has happened. But most of all is that we don't even feel it ourselves. We don't even know who we are. And this is the sad thing of it. You know, this is about you really understanding that the only way that you can get past this, move forward, hurt them, you know, get away from them is by going no contact. And I know that this is one of the hardest things that you will ever, ever have to experience or ever have to do, but you have to do it. This is to save your sanity, your well-being, your soul. You know, going no contact protects you from so much. And for those of you who are finding it really difficult or it can be really hard for you to go no contact because you have assets or children, you have to minimize that emotional validation that you're giving to that narcissist. You have to take that back and see it almost like a business transaction where you just give them the information that they need. You withhold the emotional validation. You don't give it to them because then they know where you are. They know where you are in your healing journey. They can work out how you're thinking and what's going on for you. They see emotions as weakness. So this is why they don't give anything back to you. They have hidden their emotions. They have taken their emotions to cut off point. Like they're not going to show you that because for them, emotions is weakness. So they've got to stand strong. They've got to be in control. They've got to be able to manipulate all the time. And that's how you have to see it. This is how you have to understand it. That actually, the narcissist is not here to build a relationship with you, to build on something. They just want to take and take and take whatever resources it is that you've got, whether that's time, that's money, that's emotional validation. They're just going to take because that is what keeps them going. And that is the thing, keeps them going. They don't care about you. You're not important in any of this. It's just what you can give them. You're transactional. You're an object. You're there to serve them. Transactional means that, you know what, you're there to supply them. You're there to give them. And you know what? They'll replace you because there is no connection to you. There's no depth of feeling. There's no connection to you. That's why you will get replaced. They don't connect. So guys, I really hope that this video explains this to you a little bit better so that you can get your control back in your life so that you can gain more understanding. 
If you are someone who is going through this right now, please know that I do offer one-to-one -one consultations. Please see the description box below. And please know that I do offer a mentorship program, which is gonna be starting very soon. If you want more information, please see the description box below. And also I do offer the journal club, which is, um, I offer journal prompts go out every Monday. And if you are someone who is going through therapy or counseling, and would, this would be a great tool to use alongside that. If you're interested, please see the description box below. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.